lot of pressure. <laughs> Especially in Transpersonal person, Serge Bennington, who claims this is from England, but he's got a Russian soul. <laughs> Bernadette Lynn from France, she is our president, so please be nice to her. And we've got our shamanic practitioner, who have, was sent to us by the spirit, who is going to share his wisdom with us. Hello, can you, it's good. And you can hear me from here? Good morning. I feel a pygmy, a little person in front of all you wonderful people in the audience. And I feel very honored to be here because I am actually half Russian. And my mother was born in the revolution. My, my grandfather had been the aide de camp to the Tsar. And then the revolution came and my mother escaped when she was six months old and came to Paris. So I always feel a very deep connection with Russia and your extraordinary story because this is a talk about a new story for a new humanity. And I was just thinking your story in your country has been very difficult. Revolution, Stalin, and I think that this is the great problem on the planet of stories because we human beings are a storytelling species. We tell, us <coughs> we tell ourselves stories to create meaning for ourselves so we can set up a context for how to view life. And the values we hold about it, the beliefs we have, are all about the stories that we inherit because they live in us. And if we look at our planet at the moment with thousands of immigrants, with warfare at many levels, <coughs> cyber warfare, trade warfare, a global war between all the different tribes, climate change, typhoons and storms, the rich get richer, the poor poorer, and especially so many people in so many countries being dissatisfied, so we're seeing the rise of a new t toxic demagogue, which is well embodied in America. So the world is a dangerous place, and there's a climate of fear and uncertainty. And I say that this is the result of the stories that we've inherited. Because all of us here are the product of stories that enchain our hearts and that they rob us of soul and they keep us superficial, in which we believe there isn't enough in the world to go round, that hunger and starvation, whatever we do, is inevitable. That that we're all separate from one another. We're all disconnected from the cosmos. And our culture tells us these stories. They're the stories that we inhabit. So it's natural that we feel anxious and alienated, and we feel we're not good enough, we should be more. And this is a lot to do with the stories that determine how we see ourselves. 
because, my dear friends, as our high priest of cuckoo-ness, Donald Trump, would say, it's all false truth. And I would like to suggest that our survival, if we're going to make it to the end of the century, is through being nourished by new stories about what it means to be a human being. Stories that tell us that we're all souls, we're all interconnected, that we live in a generous and abundant universe, that there are many ways to God, and God is a loving, not a punishing being that we're all part of the consciousness of our planet. And my friends, these new stories are stalking us. They already exist, but we are shut down to their presence. We need to open to their presence. And the great philosopher Plotinus said, man is not a thing but a space through which the divine can manifest. And I think that the aim of transpersonal psychology is to help us all grow up, that's the psychotherapy bit, and wake up, that's the spiritual bit, to realize who we really are. And when, when we can touch our integral aliveness as human beings, then we can begin to see the world and act in the world from a place of who we really are. Because these stories exist, and the great wise men and women of the past have lived according to these stories. And they exist in all cultures. But we need to be thoroughly fed up with the old story. We need to be thoroughly fed up with the culture in which we live and the values it tells us we ought to live by. As the great Sri Aurobindo said, to hope for a change in human affairs without a change in human nature, without a shift in the stories we believe in, is an impossible miracle. So there's three big questions to ask ourselves. One, what are some of these new stories circling around us? What are they? Two, how can we be aware of them? And three, how can we embody them in our lives so we can be carriers of the next step of human evolution? And we need to remember that the more we make the shift away from the old story, the more the old story begins to die. Just like a newspaper, if you no longer subscribe and buy it, it'll die. And that's so with the old stories, and we're at this transition point at the moment. And I think to let in the new story is very much about letting in soul. And I quote Jung, he said, when soul is neglected or repressed, it doesn't just go away, but appears symbolically in obsessions, addictions, violence, and a loss of meaning, and a profound sense of dissatisfaction with everything we do. And my friends, everything that is soulless in our world is about the old story. Now let's look at some of the differences between the old and the new story. The old story, life is we have to own things. The new story, life is about being. The old story is about love of power. The new story is about the power of love. The old story is about financial profit being dependent upon success. The new story says we're successful if we're loved, if we live a creative life, if we're healthy, 
if we support our fellow human beings. The old story says we use our planet to get rich. The new story says we honor our planet and by honoring it we feel rich inside ourselves. The old story tells us that reason is what we need to live by, the God of reason. The new story says that we need to live by the heart as well. The old story's vision of power is Rambo and Schwarzenegger. The new story is about the subtle martial artists. The old story says, my country first, Trump, America great, and to hell with what happens in the larger global community. The new story says, how can I honor what the larger whole needs, which I recognize helps my own country to become rich. The old story has a love of luxury and commercialism. The new story has a desire for beauty predicated on simplicity and being natural. The old story says, fix the past. The new story says, let's create something new. The old story says, dump. The new story says, let's recycle. The old story says, we need continual war in order to keep the economy going. Crazy, isn't it? But it's true. Perpetual war for perpetual peace. The new story says, let's work for peace and create a new system. Now, as we look at the old story, we see every aspect of it is out of harmony with the way the world needs to unfurl. So how can we be an activist for a new story? Because I think that that's what the deeper purpose of the transpersonal movement is about. It's not just about our personal change, but how can we be change agents for the larger world? I think there's two things. One, we need to see where are we embedded in the old story? Where do old story values still reside in us? Where are we prejudiced? Where do we disrespect our fellow human beings? But we also need to look outside in the world. Where does humanity play what Eckhart Tolle calls the pain games? And how can we do something, each of us in our own way, to take energy out of the old system and bring it into the new? Because the old stories have their tentacles embedded deeply inside us all. And just very recently, I had given a lecture on opening the heart. I've got a book about it that's for sale over there at the entrance table. And I did something incredibly heartless to a friend. And I was amazed. I said, you know, I'm talking about heart, but I was so selfish. So it's like we need to be awake to look at ourselves and see where the old patterns still operate and then we can do something about them. Because our emotional problems keep us locked into the old story. If we have low self-esteem, if we were traumatized, if we weren't loved in the right way, if we don't heal these patterns, we tend to fall back into the old story. And one important thing is to not make ourselves or other people wrong for our lack of evolutionary development. You know, I'll just give you an example. Trump in America, because he's the big high priest of everything that's wrong with the world. 
You know, she's a great example because Trump embodies the old story in every single aspect, in his patriarchy, his misogyny, his racism, his putting everyone down, his bullying. But it's very important to see that in America, Trump got into power because 50% of the American people see the world like him. No. The, well, sort of less, 40%. I mean, a lot of people see the world according to Trump, and that's why he got elected, the Trumpites. Okay, I'm happy that you say there's less. But the point is that there's many of our human beings who couldn't care one iota about climate change or helping our fellow human beings, who couldn't care about immigrants or the plight of those who are hungry. And we need to understand that that's a fact and not make them wrong for their lack of evolutionary development. And we can talk about three distinct phases, the egocentric development that's just me first, ethnocentric development, me and my tribe, you know, I just stick up for my tribe, and then planet-centric development, what is it, what can I do to help the planet? And that's the story which we are trying to move towards, and which I feel if enough of us move towards this new story, that I think we're going to make it to the end of the century. I'm going to talk this evening about looking to the future. So I wrote down 20 things that I thought if we wanted to embrace a new story that we need to take up in our lives. First thing, be committed to work at what it is inside us that keeps us locked into the old patterns, that keeps our hearts closed down, that keeps us afraid of being open to our human beings, that keeps us afraid of saying, hi, you're a great person, I love you. Because, and that sort of keeps us locked in our little containers. We need to open up, we need to learn how to undo the chains and be free because the new story is very much about freedom and what helps what I've always done is to seek the company of people who are more evolved than us who live the new story because then we can learn through their presence when I was 19, I visited the community of Findhorn in Scotland, a spiritual community. And I was very locked, you know, sort of, kind of, sort of public school, Oxford man, sort of very repressed. I was sort of standing like this, I wore a tie. And I was suddenly exposed to people who were free, who loved me for who I was, not because I was special but just because I was another human being, and this opened my eyes. And we need to seek the company of people who are free, because it's lovely to be in the presence of people who don't try to impress us, don't, don't tell us that they're more important, valuable, and superior than us, who don't try to please us, but are just real. So, Choose the company of real people, wherever you find them. And they're not only spiritual masters. The third, engage in activities that feed your soul and that give you joy and beauty. My dear friend, Vladimir, and thank you for this wonderful conference. It's such an honor to be here. And thank you also for your wonderful film on Carlos Castaneda. My dear friend Vladimir is going to talk about beauty. And that's very key to the Russian soul. And as I think 
um, that great artist, that, that mystical Russian artist, um, he had a wonderful quote, um, the name is forgotten, but he said, beauty heals, beauty transforms. So go for beauty. See the beauty in everything. Spend more time being out in nature. I teach spiritual retreats for people and I get them to connect to the trees and the wind and the mountains and the hills. That is more therapeutic than sitting in front of someone and telling them that their mother didn't love them. <laughs> we, we need to really remember to be with things that are natural because that will take us away from our addiction to normality because it's our normality that is the problem. I've got a little article there called The Three Madnesses and I say that the biggest madness is to believe that the old story is sane. So go out into nature and learn about things natural. Also work at opening your hearts. I've just written a book on opening the heart and it's my wife is selling it there and all the proceeds are going towards this conference so please buy a copy because it's all going to help um, Vladimir and they're for sale there but try to open your hearts <coughs> work at opening your heart and connect with all the qualities of love and joy and celebration because we need to celebrate life. The wonderful thing of last night was it was a celebration of life. And we need to celebrate. Too many of us, and I find it a little bit with something of the Russian spirit because of the traumas you've gone through, there can be a sort of, there can sometimes be a fear of letting go to celebrate. You know, that we're brought up to an image that we have to work all the time. I say that the biggest work that many of us can do is to factor in time for celebration each day. And see as our celebration finding a way that, to make a difference in the world. I think that this is the key thing. Schweitzer said if you want to be happy Discover your own way of how to be of service. How do we make a difference? Do we want to campaign for that elephants are not shot? Do we want to be, do we want to work with Médecins Sans Frontières? Do we want to be a therapist to help people find their soul? Do we want to campaign against those companies that destroy the planet? Whatever we do to make a difference in a positive way, we're giving energy to bring the new story into being. We also need to treat everyone we meet with respect and stop projecting our stuff onto them. This is so big. If I don't want to own how fat I am, I can see someone and say, look at that fat person, that awful fat person out there. And we're projecting our stuff onto them. Take it back, own our own stuff, work with our own pain. Open our hearts to our own pain. As Rumi said, when the heart is open, all pain can be turned into a healing. Now, this applies more to Westerners, to Western Europe, but give up being such a consumer and seek to conserve more and try and live more simply. I live, I live pretty simply at the moment and I've never been happier. When I didn't live so simply and my life was terribly complicated, I spent my whole life having to deal with all the complications I'd chosen. I think 
that there's something kind of magical about simplicity. I don't know if any of you have ever read that book um, called Walden by Thoreau. It's fantastic, isn't it? This, this American transcendentalist poet, he built a hut by a pool and he lived in this hut for four years and it was his observations on the world where he stayed away from all the hurly-burly and he allowed himself to find his own voice. So finding a new story, my friends, is finding your own voice and being in a space where you can find your own voice because often we aren't in a space where we can discover our own voice. Which means make an effort to try to live a strong inner life. We have two livings we need to earn. An outer living, we go and we earn money from our job. And we have an inner living. And if we ignore the inner living, we pay a price. So find what nourishes your inner life through surrounding yourself with people who are real, doing the things that you love, allowing space to contemplate and pray, dealing with your own dark side, Because when we live a strong inner life, we enjoy life more. Five more minutes? Good. And work at letting go what we no longer need. I got divorced about 10, 10 years ago and my ex-wife took a lot of my possessions and things and I, at the time I felt I'm so attached to these things, these paintings, house, I realized now I didn't need all those things and they were just accoutrements to surround my ego so my ego could feel a little bit more secure. Look, I have this big house. I now live in a small house. I'm kind of pretty happy there. I'm also very lucky because I have a beautiful new wife. So that is also important. A wonderful wife. So find a wonderful partner. That also helps. But the important thing in your partner, they need to share the values that you have. If you're interested in saving the world and your partner just wants to be um, successful in society, you probably won't get on too well. So I think one of the things about the old story is that we don't take responsibility for our lives. We sort of say our, our politicians, our experts, our doctors, our um, advisors, our scientists will fix the world for us. They'll do it. It's their fault the world is in the condition it's in. Take responsibility. We're the difference makers. Our world will change, not because of them, and I'll tell you why, because they are the cause of most of the problems in the world. That's why they don't want to often go to the cause of many of the problems, because they don't want to have to face the fact that our world leaders are often the cause of them. So take responsibility for all areas of your life. If you go to a doctor, and he, and he tells you something, ask yourself, is this right? So take your power back. The big thing of Castaneda, which turned me on to Castaneda, and Steve reminded, 
me when we had dinner the other evening was that a crisis for an ordinary person is either is bad. For Castaneda, Don Juan's teaching said, a crisis is a challenge to help you grow. So we're living in a time of great crises. So let's use these crises to help us grow and become more fully human, because then we're living the new story. Always keep ourselves informed with what's going on in the world. Never think that I live a new story, I need to be transcendent. I think we're challenged to be very grounded in the world, but as Gurdjieff said, to be in the world but not of it. So know what's going on around us. A great friend of mine said, I always watch the, in, the evening news so I know where to direct my prayers that day. Because the difficulties of the things that are going on in the world, there are challenges. We don't leave them out there to deal with them, but it's up to us. Did any of you see a great movie with Julia Roberts called Erin Brockovich? Fantastic. About a young working class girl who felt strongly that people who live near her were being poisoned by a factory. And she took on this huge multinational company all on her own. And she galvanized people and she got them to pay out millions and millions to all the workers who, who had cancer. And she had no power or clout and she had no money, but she had a strong vision. And the strong vision is very important. And um, I always hold a positive vision for the future because I know that the more positive I hold my vision for the future, the more I inject positivity into the world. And even if disasters are exploding around us, stay in the positive vision. My grandparents were incredible. They lost everything at the revolution, as I said. They escaped to Paris. You know, they had huge wealth and everything. My grandmother worked as a, as a char lady to clean flats, and my grandfather worked as a doorman to open doors for the grand hotels in Paris. 30 seconds. So, but but I'm told that they always stayed positive and they, they never lamented their fate. And that's, I think, what happens if we keep our hearts open. So, my dear friends, I just leave you, stay positive, keep your hearts open, live with lots of soul, and the new story will come looking for you. You don't need to come looking for it. It wants us to join it. Thank you very much.